All right, if you're just joining us, it's the beginning of the show. That's normally when you... Uh, hold on a second. Wendell, what, what, is there something different? Did you, like, get a haircut or something? No. Uh, is there, like... Wait a second, you got a beard. Did you grow hey. a beard in one week? Hey. <laughs> Thanks to Vivis, our sponsor. Their night series of battery packs ranges in size from 6,500 to 13,000 milliamp hours. The night version 3 also has a stand so you can watch stuff and charge it at the same time. Click on the screen for more information. <laughs> Is Thinking yeah. one of our sponsors now? I don't know. I don't, maybe. I... <laughs> Wait, Product uh, we're, we're a Taco Bell. <laughs> we're a direct competitor with Think Geek. As a matter of fact, <laughs> I'll, I'll talk about our products later in the show. We've got so much to go through that we're just going to get started and have a bit of fun. So how about um, JPEGs that are actually not JPEGs? How about a new, <laughs> this is, that was a terrible thing to say. How about a new uh, format that is half the size of a JPEG, but looks comparable. So you can have actually much higher qualities at, uh, you know, comp well, yeah, you guys get the idea. You, you can make the web either twice as fast or you can make it look twice as good. You can pick which one you want. That's a pretty striking, um, pretty striking comparison here. Now, here's the problem with this new format, BPG. It's not as much fun to say as JPEG. I mean, you could be BPUG, or that could turn into something awful. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that no. That could turn into something awful. Like, <laughs> never. Everyone in the comments is going to be having fun with that. Uh, no, I, I don't oh, think dear. that one should be. Yeah, that one should definitely be. What's the, what's the, there's not an acronym where you say it like. Uh, uh, that should be one of the ones where you say each letter. What is that called? I always forget. Damn it. No. Uh, iconism or... You know what I'm <laughs> talking about, right? Initialism, yes. <laughs> iconism. Yeah. Well, my yeah, favorite it's, was... Uh, uh, my favorite of all time was uh, SCSI. S-C-S-I. People in California, for whatever re reason, pronounce that sexy. It's like, yeah, you got a sexy drive. It's like, uh... Whatever. Oh, no. People in California do a lot of strange things, don't they? All right, so anyway, the problem with this format is that nothing supports it. It's an open format, which is really cool, but nothing supports it at the moment. So we're going to have to see extremely widespread support. With There's going to be all kinds of legacy stuff that's going to need to need to be updated. I'm, I'm off to a bad start. Let's just keep on moving. So Bitcoin. Ah! <laughs> that's what I have to say about Bitcoin. What the hell is going on with Bitcoin? It's, Not it's really anything. It's dropping it's, and dropping. It's, it's, it's going down slowly, but it's it's... I guess you would call this kind of a plateau, sort of, for the last couple of months. Kind of I a think downward. it's been remarkably stable after the rocket, you know, up to the top. Well, so. I mean, the, the bubble burst, right? But it's since then, it's been a slow decline. I've, I've bought a bunch of Bitcoins, and someone tweeted at me today, and their tweet was, Ha 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 You said this was a good investment. Ha 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 ha. I'm keeping my Bitcoins. I'm keeping them. And you know what? I might even throw some more in there because I think it's going to go up. I know there's a lot of weird stuff going on in Australia with Bitcoin. There's a lot of weird stuff going on now that it's becoming more mainstream. But the way uh, Bitcoin is now is it's such a new thing for the, the, the masses that they don't understand it yet. And, and once they start to understand a little more, I think it'll be okay. We're, we're still in the early stages. The, the real early stage has already passed and people have made their millions. I don't think anybody's going to be in a position where they're going to you know, invest and make a gazillion billion dollars anymore. That's not going to happen, but it could still be sound for the future, and that's my take. So don't take my word as gold and go throw all your money in Bitcoin and then yell at me in a year when it's zero dollars. If you really want something that's going to work, silver. But real silver bars, not paper. Anyway, that was my <laughs> rant of that. <laughs> and it's just because silver holds its value better than fiat currency. Not yeah, really. It is a little bit becoming more valuable because every time we blow up somebody in some country somewhere, that's another two or three hundred dollars of silver lost. Well, that and also it's it's being used in all kinds of hardware. Hell, there's I bet there's some silver and there's some silver right in this thing right here. We could we could melt it down and get three about three or four dollars, guaranteed, <laughs> of all kinds of different things. Yeah. All right. Uh, what's next on the menu here? Let's just move right along. Oh, yeah. Uh, so the guys from Cards Against Humanity sold bullshit in a box, and people bought it. And on the website, it said that this, this will come with cow patties, basically. And people still bought it. I, 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 the only reason I'm mentioning this is that 30,000 people bought this. What did, why, what did they think they were doing? <laughs> what? 
We're in the I wrong business. I enjoyed the YouTube we're... video. I watched the YouTube video. I should not have watched the YouTube video because I was like, maybe there's more to it than that. No, and the guy's like, you know, there might be something in the poop. I'll break the poop in half. And at that point, I just, I weeped for humanity. I really did. Yeah, I'm not even going to, you know, I'm close, close the video. Close it, abort, abort the tech, abort the tech, move right along. All right, so... <laughs> Let's get into some more serious stuff, right? You guys love the serious stuff. No one wants to have any fun anymore. Put on your serious face. There it is. All right. Now we're going to talk about Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft, they just, they've been battling with the uh, Department of Justice the, and, and the U.S. courts about some data that the U.S. wants, but it's stored on a server in Ireland. And the courts were like, give us that data. You're a U.S. company, and we don't care where it's stored. We, we want it, so give it to us. And Microsoft's like, nope. You have to talk to Ireland, and if Ireland wants to get it, you got to get it from there. So they appealed the, the, the court case, and there's a battle going on. And the only reason we're really bringing this up is now several other companies have come and they've you know said, hey, we're, we're going to stand with Microsoft. And those companies include Verizon, Apple, a, uh, Amazon, AT&T, Cisco, eBay, HP, uh, Infor, Salesforce, uh, Rackspace, and uh, I think there's even more than that somewhere, but... Um, yeah, and then there's several different news publications and all that sort of thing who are joining with Microsoft. And again, I'm going to remind you guys that this is only about their bottom line. They're not doing this because they care about your privacy or anything like that. Hell, they when when, when the next version of Windows 10 comes out, Cortana is going to be right there, just sucking up all your private information all day long. Spyware built into the built right there into the interface. It's wonderful. So they're not doing it because they care about you. They're doing it because it's bad for their bottom line. Because other you know foreign investors and and companies that are overseas are going to look at that and be like "Ooh, we can't use microsoft servers because the u.s government wants something even if it's stored in lithuania they're just going to take it man so that's why microsoft's doing this but hey the bottom line is is that it's bad for the u.s government to do this and it's cool that all these companies regardless of their motives are getting behind it i'm i'm, I'm pragmatic enough to say you know what i hate most of these companies but i'm okay with them getting behind this let me yeah. go ahead and make a prediction so this will probably go to the Supreme Court or something like that. And what will happen is the Supreme Court will find some sort of ridiculous technicality to avoid actually ruling on this. And, and then what? I mean, is it just like the Supreme Court's going to just throw the case out or are they going to? No, it'll, it'll be it'll be Microsoft is going to be in, in trouble. It'll be some really weird technicality like because Microsoft, you know, operates as one entity, not dealing with the international version of itself that, uh, you know, that's the reason why they have to turn over the emails. But if there was a Microsoft Ireland and Microsoft Ireland was treated like a completely separate business unit, then yeah, okay. You know, maybe there's something to the jurisdiction thing. But in this case, I think they're going to say, oh, Microsoft operates like it's one big business, so it doesn't matter where they are because it's U.S. It's like, uh, this is going to be really bad for a lot of American companies and probably going to hurt our economy even more. But, you know, the people that are in power right now are um, data hoarders. They're so paranoid about somebody that might be doing something wrong somewhere. They've got to store all the data. And so that's just going to be really bad for American business. But, hey, this is probably the catalyst that's going to help open source really take over the universe. I mean, it's already taken over the universe on phones and servers and stuff, but in other countries now, it's like, oh, hey, we can take, take open source stuff and do stuff with it. And this is probably, in long term, going to unseat Microsoft and Apple from significant uh, portions of the desktop operating system. We need to do something to unseat Microsoft. I just installed the latest version of Windows 10, the version that's super secret and has all the do not do anything or say anything about this or we'll shoot you in the head like notifications. I just installed that version of it. Cortana's built into it and I have so many uh, just issues with that. It's similar to what, you know, OS 10 did when they integrated the, the, the search history and all that stuff and they were storing your data. And then even Ubuntu did this kind of thing where they were um, giving you advertisements and they they were basically basically spyware was built into the uh, the what's the Unity uh, so if you as long as you use something other than Unity you were okay but Windows 10 the new version with Cortana it's going to be one of those things where they kill you with convenience you know you can talk to Cortana and be like hey Cortana can you do this thing for me can you schedule an appointment uh, can you search for this on the web but you know at the same time Microsoft is going to be harvesting all that data so it's kind of like really convenient spyware that's built into uh, Windows 10. And I think you can turn it off at this point, but the fact that that code is there in the background and it works with your microphone, it just bothers me. And it, it makes me want to move to Linux. So yeah, there's a lot of programs that we need open source versions of because I'm reliant upon too many uh, non-free 
pieces of software. Sad. It's very sad. Anyway, that was a rant that I don't didn't need to do, but yeah. <laughs> it's all good. We'll, we'll put up with it. It's fine. <laughs> I, I'm saying that because if anyone out there is in the open source world, we need to really get together and get serious about making some some pieces of software that compete with like Adobe CC. I know that sounds crazy, but the, the productivity stuff's not there. I know a lot of games are coming, but we need to start moving towards uh, Linux if we want an open and free world because Microsoft, the future looks, I mean, it's going to be convenient. Windows 10 will probably be nice and fast and all that, but uh, Linux needs to be the future. All right, enough of that nonsense. Let's go on and talk about the Pirate Bay. So the last week, um, I guess it was about a week and a half ago or so, Swedish police came and kicked the doors down, turned off servers, knocked the Pirate Bay offline. Several different mirrors have been popping up and that sort of thing. But the big question uh, that we posed was, what's going to be next? What's going to replace this? Because it's not gonna, they're not going to stop piracy by, do, by turning that stuff off. And they're also, in my opinion, fighting a, a nonsensical battle because... People want stuff. They want to share. People have a natural inclination to share. Um, and it's just kicking down doors and turning off services is not going to fight. And it's not going to keep their archaic business models alive. However, that's what they're doing. And they put the Pirate Bay offline. And, you know, I was like, hmm, I wonder what's going to happen next. Well, I didn't think it was going to be this fast. But now you can go onto GitHub and download an open source version of the Pirate Bay. You go and grab the repository. Uh, you get the full database dump. And then you can run your own version as long as you have a hosting plan that's in a country that has, I guess, that, that allows this sort of thing. You can't do this in the USA or in several other countries, but some countries allow, you know, that will allow the Pirate Bay to, to, to work. So if you're in one of those countries, you can legally put, up, put all this online. And here's what's interesting. Uh, they have the entire databases, not only from the Pirate Bay, but you also get kick-ass torrents and I forget what else. You get three, uh, maybe it was ISO Hunt. I forget. Yeah. But anyway, that's you basically have all that stuff. All the trackers are there. So there's going to be a ton of Pirate Bay mirrors. We don't need any more pirate websites. We don't need any more freaking, well, pirate torrent websites, whatever. We don't need any more, but there's going to be a gazillion of them now. So this is just what happens when they continue to fight the public's natural want of, you know, data. They want the data. They want it. I mean, it's, it's a distribution problem, and they're fighting it. And instead of fixing it, they get this. So, yeah, it'll be really interesting to see how the powers that be, the MPAA, the RIAA, the, the different police forces, Gemma in Germany, how they all respond to this now when there's a million versions of the Pirate Bay floating around out there on the Internet. It's, it's going to be interesting. from GitHub. I guarantee it. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> yeah, GitHub well, is going to be like, well, you know, this doesn't really violate any rules, but we're, we've got to take it down. We, yeah, we but we don't want GitHub's like we got a lot of people here who are doing some like serious shit. We don't need our doors kicked in, so yeah. 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 So that's the pragmatic uh, way to do it. And here's another thing that just came out. So th this has been going on for a long time and now there's a version already available. Uh researchers at uh Delft, is that is it? Delft, yeah. It's weird. I don't even I don't know this university, but Delft University of Technology have made a program called uh Tribbler. Uh, Tribbler is a client that lets you download torrents and magnet links, and it also allows you to browse trackers. And people can put together lists of their favorite uh, torrents and that sort of thing, and you can just go on there and browse all of this stuff. Uh, you can create your own lists, whatever. So there's, it's more than just you know uh, a thing that lets you... It's, it's more than just like a uTorrent clone or something like that. It's way beyond that. Here's where this gets really interesting. It has something built in that's kind of similar to Tor. It basically sends your connection through lots of different proxies to make it very difficult to find you. If you're seeding, if you're, you're, you're torrenting or whatever, it makes it very difficult to find you. And you can sort of balance speed with, uh, you know, um, security. You can pick, you know, how many relays you want to go through. So, uh, I mean, nothing's going to be the, the full solution for pure uh, for like a, a pure hidden connection, but you do this in combination with with a VPN, and it'll it'll make it very difficult for people to to, to find you. I'm not advocating piracy at all. Uh, I just think that it is good to have ways to be completely secure and private on the internet, and this is one of them. Uh, we actually use some torrents for internal sharing of our own stuff, you know. Um, so there are legitimate uses for torrents. I think it's kind of crazy that people just. Have, have sort of taken the word torrent and made it into a bad word or an evil word, you know, as if it were you know, synonymous with shooting people in the head. 
But I yeah. used to use BitTorrent Sync for syncing all of my various devices with vast, vast stores of data. It was a fast, efficient way to sync, you know, gigabytes upon gigabytes of data. Yeah, it it is. What do you what do you use now? You've got a much better version. I forget what it, uh, what it's called. Right? Sync thing. I've, sync I've, thing. Yeah. I, I've been moving everything over to Sync Thing. Sync Thing is amazing, and there's new and better software for it all the time. The mobile client, I think, kind of sucks. Uh, it does the job, but it's not very good at it. It sort of dies in the background, and if I don't notice, it's like, oh, I'm in the middle of nowhere, and I have to sync now. That's great. Thanks. But other than that, it's pretty good. And I like that uh, the uh, free NAS client that uh, comes as a pre-built jail is basically good to go. And Ooh, a it's recent nice. Version, it's a so. little BSD jail going? Yeah. That's snazzy. Well. We've got a free NAS video coming up for you very soon. It's going to be awesome. We may end up so being funny. like 60 terabytes. I don't even know, though. Maybe. <laughs> Not guaranteed. The, the, the case that I have, I'm going to have, I've already figured it out. I'm going to have to screw, um, I'm going to have to like, like drill some holes in the case and screw like an extra hard drive cage on top of it. So there's going to be like three hard drives just sitting in the open air on top with some cords. It, it'll be hilarious but why not you know it's going to go in a closet and it's going to do what i want it to do and i'll keep it clean anyway let's move on to the next thing wendell i think i can talk about this but i think you can talk about it even better i'm talking about the i can uh fishing scam <laughs> that's kind of hilarious i'll let you uh, so this is kind of a big deal i can this. is the uh the the internet corporation for assigned names and numbers it is the corporate thing that many many other corporations get that is sort of powers some of the core internet infrastructure and there was a news article that apparently somebody responded to a phishing email and all of a sudden you know there was a virus and they didn't notice right away and so somebody you know uh said that its internal computer networks were breached as a result of a sophisticated phishing attack so it's like wait these guys this these these guys are the one of the key players in core internet infrastructure and you mean to tell me that they got a phishing email somebody opened the attachment <laughs> what and they, had is to, going they put on? in their name and password <laughs> what is happening here i just don't even okay first of all what second of all they really should be using smart cards at this point i mean smart cards you know token based authentication something this is this is crazy this, this is, is i can we're talking about here i mean this is ridiculous yeah you know spe speaking of bad security let's talk about sony for a minute shall we this sony hack i didn't even <laughs> want to cover a few weeks ago when this all started coming out i was like i don't even care i didn't even really care about covering it but now it's getting hilarious and there are so many layers to this Layers like an onion, not like a cake. All right, We're so tell it for, different than anywhere else, though. You've never heard this. This is going to ah. be, yeah, extremely different compared to everything else. So the first thing that I want to mention, this is funny, that when that when the hack happened, Sony has a clause that says if anything bad happens, they don't have to tell their employees. It's part of their contract. And when this all went down, the the council was like, yeah, well, all their passwords have been compromised and everything. Let's just not tell them. So Sony did not tell their employees about the hack when they found out about it. So that's kind of like a, a big WTF. Um, then moving right along here. I guess I mean I really still am iffy about this whole North Korea thing. I, it just doesn't sound like a North Korean thing, but it looks like North Korea was behind the hack. They hired a team of hackers in China uh, to do the hack, and yeah, and there it was. Didn't you say that uh, Mitnick had a what was his tweet? Um, some of their passwords. Uh <laughs> yeah, Kevin Mitnick, one of the executives, I, his name was like Mark Lur or something. And uh, Kevin Mitnick tweeted, it's like, well, it turns out, you know, one of the high level, high ranking Sony executives, his password was Sony ML3. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought? Wow. Uh, <laughs> at least it wasn't just Sony. I mean, at least he, ML3, you know, it's a bit difficult, but yeah. Um, <laughs> no, what is no Sony? Like, there's like three letters of entropy there. That's just not even. Just come on, come on. That's just not even. So I mean, it would have. I mean, it would have taken thirty minutes to, to crack that. That's a long time. You know, that's that's, that's difficult. <laughs> thirty minutes on a cell phone, maybe. <laughs> well, but, were they uh, using graphics cards? Of two seconds. Well, I, you know, my my take on this is that uh, Sony, somebody looked up their budget, and I saw this, this unverified claim, but I saw this on a, on a website, that Sony globally, globally, as big as they are, multi-billion dollar company, only spends a million dollars a year 
on on their IT security, which that's horrifying. Security should be a significant part of your budget, especially when you're as large as Sony and you're as big a target as Sony. But the other more scary thing is that these guys had access to this stuff for over a year. Well, at least a year, probably over a year. And no one noticed. So there were no audit things in place. There was nobody saying, hey, you know, this is a weird amount of traffic across the firewall. Or, you know, there wasn't blinking lights on somebody's dashboard or or anything like that. Nobody thought anything weird was going on. So that's sort of a sort of a red flag inside a company as large as Sony. I mean, you don't you don't generally expect that. And so, you know, the employees, uh, Bruce Schneer came out and he was like, oh, you know, the employees are the real victims here because they're having their stuff plastered all over the internet. But this kind of thing can happen to any company. And totally that's true. This kind of thing can happen to any company. But in Sony's case, I think an ounce of prevention is, was worth a pound of cure. And I really do see some things that they could have done much better that they, they really didn't do. And so now the whole thing is like, oh, we're going to pull the movie. We're not going to do the movie. Well, that, yeah, that's, that's the, the next layer in the onion. So that's, yeah. the, that's the next layer in the onion. And it's, it's, you know, what's funny about this is it's, it wasn't Sony saying this, even though the people who have offered, well, let's go through this, this article real quick. Uh, Regal, AMC, Cinemark, and several others have canceled the showing of this film because they're afraid of, uh, you know, like a, a the Korea, North Korea lashing out at them. Well, you know, Sony, they, they were like, oh, we still want to do this. And George, who, who was it? George R.R. R. Martin or no, who was it? Um, yeah, was George, it I think it was yeah. George R.R. R. Martin. He has his own movie theater somewhere and he's like, I'll run it. And then they were like, ah, let's not do that. You know why they don't want to do it? Because they're going to make a ton of money. Now that this is in the media and it's exploded and everyone's talking about it and this is the mo- they're doing that thing where it's like, hey, we got, we got this movie come out. It's going to be kind of shitty but maybe a little bit funny and there's a terrible, a gruesome death scene for, for, for Kim Jong-un at the end and they're like, but you know what? We it's, it's You can't have it. So now everyone's, even the people like Almost, almost me. That almost got me. I don't really care about this movie, but now I'm almost like, oh, I, I kind of very curious. What, what's all this? What, what's going on here? I want to see this. I want to see the thing that made Korea so angry. So now everybody's going to want to see it, and it's not just going to roll into theaters on Christmas and be like, hey, we're a funny movie with a shitty whatever stuff going on. It's going to be a thing. A big thing. And what they're going to do is they're going to wait a little while until the Christmas season dies down. There's a lot of competition during the Christmas season. And then it's going to roll into theaters in like the middle of January when nothing's going on or maybe February and be like, hey, you know what? Screw this. We're going to do this because democracy and all that kind of stuff. And we don't care. And then everyone's going to go see it. And they're going to make all their money back that they're losing right now from this big breach. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> Just wait and see. <laughs> so that's layer two of the onion. Well, and the, the other piece of evidence that we have for that is that, you know, a lot of theaters were like, well, we're going to show Team America instead. And if you guys haven't seen Team America, it's another terrible, it's, it's, not, a, it's not a great movie. I mean, it's kind of funny, but it's I not. It's, funny. it's toilet humor. And so it's something you can All have on the background. Is. The jokes are kind of funny. I mean, it's just, it's like, eh, it's not. It's not. It's it's okay. It's not. You know, it was it was less know. toilet humor than um, the the Book of Mormon on Broadway. You, did you see that one <laughs> when you were yeah. there? Did you see that? Yeah, I thought it was less that toilet was... humor than that. But <laughs> <laughs> that's you know that's that's pretty true. Matt that's Stone you know, and Trey Parker. I, yeah, Matt Stone and Trey Parker. They do have they do have a knack of actually getting in some sort of kind of poignant things. But yeah, eh. while talking about so, toilet humor. And so these theaters were like, well, you know, we'll run Team America instead if, if Sony's not going to release the interview or if we're not going to run the interview because of whatever reasons. And uh, Sony was like, oh, no, no. And so I think what's really going to happen is there's going to be all this hullabaloo. And then at the last minute, they're going to be like, oh, shucks, you know, all you guys are interested. We can, we can be the brave Americans and, you know, not be afraid of Captain Evil Terrorist crazy person and uh and you know we'll run the movie and it's going to be great for democracy and that's and then it'll be like a big pr blitz again so all this is about i mean the hack was real but you know all of this stuff since then is really just just pr maneuvering there was a guy uh i don't know somebody tweeted that was like you know if you guys are scared to death of kim jong-un you know if you had uh uh, you know, if you'd experienced Hitler, you'd be crapping your pants. <laughs> so it's kind of like that. Yeah. All right, Wendell, are you ready to go one layer deeper in this onion? This is the layer that's going to make you cry. <laughs> you ready for this? Oh, actually, first, yeah. uh, do, do you know what time it is? Uh-oh. Is it Rant 30? Right this second, it is Rant 30. So um, through all these different leaks, 
a lot of very troubling information has emerged under the internet. It appears that not only Sony, but Hollywood and the MPAA, the RIA, all these big things. I mean, let's just stick with the MPAA because I don't think the RIA was explicitly mentioned in this, but the MPAA, Motion Picture Association of America, and Hollywood, they really, really, really just do not like the direction that culture is heading. The, the whole, like information is everywhere we can share things and hey when stuff comes out we want to have it on whatever device we want it they don't get this and they cannot stand it so they've created all these ridiculous things that have i, I think that they've basically created the need for piracy without the way that with, without their management of of you know media and data we wouldn't have such a a pirate scene in the first place but anyway that's i, I digress they are now attacking not only google but DNS providers, and they want to block websites that infringe on a DNS level. Now, DNS is well; it's well, not exactly I can, but I'll let you explain this. I, I, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't call it infringing. They're they're trying. The, internally, they've discussed the legal strategy of saying that because your ISP provides a DNS service, that is, they convert you know www.thepiratebay.org into an IP address, that because they provide that service, they have somehow contributed to copyright infringement. And the disturbing thing is they've actually you know got some ISPs to buy into this. It's like, oh yeah, you know we should do DNS blocking, but not only that. Uh, also blocking third-party DNS servers on the guise of, well, you know, that'll drive all these rogue DNS servers. And if there's rogue DNS servers, when you go to Facebook.com, it's not really going to be Facebook. It's going to be some other website that's going to give you malware because you can do that if you're running a rogue That's malicious. probably true, actually, yeah. And so, uh, and it was, you know, it's like you need to use your ISP's DNS server so that your ISP can control the experience. And in America, when we're getting ready to go from two ISP's to one, ah, <laughs> you know, oh, obviously God. I'm being facetious there. We've got more than one. But, you know, our two Barely. of our biggest ISP's are getting ready to become one. And so, you know, that is a global DNS thing, as far, at least as far as Americans are concerned. And so a lot of this, a lot of these emails reveal their strategy about how they sort of twist reality. I mean, it's like, you know, by all means, protect your intellectual property. But let's not throw out the baby with the bathwater. I mean, come on, really? Come on. Let's not, let's not destroy the internet because it's like somebody might pirate the interview. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great idea. That's, but that's kind of what it boils down to. They, they, they really want to. And that's the other thing is that, you know, they're, they're, all, they're obviously, they're archaic business methods. They're using the, the, the law, the courts, and that sort of thing to, you know, keep their archaic business methods alive instead of adapting with the times. That's one thing that they're doing. But they're also pointing blame in all the wrong places. Like, like we just said, they're, they're pointing blame at ISPs and DNS providers. They're also pointing a lot of blame at Google. And several documents have, have surfaced, several emails have surfaced. And they all keep referring to this company called Goliath, with which they must slay. They must kill Goliath. And um, it's obvious that Goliath is Google. They're really angry about the search terms. They're really angry about the fact that when you search for the interview, maybe some of the suggested search terms could be torrent or the interview free <laughs> download. So they're like, it's, it's some of the some of the emails are almost just ridiculous they're saying like google is encouraging this sort of behavior by it's almost as if google were, were you know google was a team of of hackers sitting in a room going like yes yes make sure that the search terms are for Ill illegal things and make sure that when the <laughs> when they search for things that that all the suggestions are illegal download and and torrent and free yes Dude, <laughs> that's we, what they make it seem like that. We talked about a little bit about that last week, didn't we? Where Google made some changes to their algorithm so that if there were domains that got repeated takedown requests, that would really severely penalize their search results. And they're like, "Look, this is going to be a self-solving problem. It's amazing." And the uh, the whoever it was they were dealing with inside the RIAA sent back kind of a snarky email or said something snarky to the yeah. press about that, and they got super pissed off about that, which was awesome. <laughs> and Google's basically like, all right, well, you guys can screw off. We've been trying to like remove search terms for you guys, but no matter what we do, it's never enough for you guys. We, you guys, send us the DMCA requests. We take them down. We, 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 we do. We bend over backwards for you guys, and then you, you've got Project Goliath going on, and you keep saying snarky things to the public. It, nothing is enough to make them happy. <laughs> we it's, joke about it's, that. So yeah, but it's the, the thing that came out, the the thing that came out from these email leaks. 
that uh, you know it definitely had my beard in knots was the uh, attorney general was like, no, no, I, I, I'm not really affiliated with the MPAA. I'm just trying to see law and justice done. It's great. And then these yeah, emails come out. The, and then the attorney the general of Mississippi. Times, yeah, no, well, the New York, yeah, yeah, but the New York Times ran the article about how the attorney general uh, there, like, issued a letter, and he's like, this is my letter, and the MPAA wrote it for him, and so that's the yeah. level of collusion that we have, is that it's literally like, we think you should say this, and he's like, oh, this looks really good, I'll just sign my name here, it's like, what? What? Yeah, this letter, this letter is, um, this letter has all the, all the stuff I'm talking about, like, from the attorney general here, like, all the different, you know, egregious things that Google is doing, like they're they're promoting uh, websites that are, that, are, that are doing evil things. They're they're it's ridiculous. If you guys go through and read this, you're like, holy crap! I mean, obviously, someone from the Attorney General from Mississippi, unless he's like an Uber Tech person, he's not going to understand any of this stuff. He's just going to sign his name to it. So it's hard to believe that he wrote it in the first place. But he kept saying, no, no, I had nothing to do with this. He even went so far as to say, I don't even really know anybody at the MPAA. I, I don't know. Every once in a while, we we they send me an you know article or something, but I don't even really know anybody. Meanwhile, the MPAA is writing his letters. <laughs> so <laughs> ridiculous. So... Google like you guys has make decided. me sound smart. I'll just send this, and it's like, no, 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 Lord, no. It's like, how do I get that job? Can I write Tom Wheeler's letter? Because we would be in a lot better shape if that could happen. No, we we don't. We're not. We're not <laughs> taking money from the right sources. We'll, we'll, we'll never be allowed to, to write Aww. this letter. So Google has. They've had enough. And Google's decided to take legal action. They have filed a lawsuit in in Mississippi against Jim Hood. So yeah, Google's pissed and. Um, <laughs> This is Excellent. good. They're, they're sick of the whole Goliath project. So this is the first thing that they're going to do to strike back about the Goliath project. And then I think we're going to see several other things happen. Um, a big battle between Google and the MPAA is not imminent, but possible. You know, a, a, a few months ago, people were saying, oh, you know what, they'll work it out. Google's mad at the MPAA because the MPAA is demanding too much, but they'll work it out. I mean, just by demanding anything from Google, the MPA, in my opinion, is demanding too much because Google um, is only an indexing service. They're not actually the, the ones putting up infringing content. So it's just absurd that Google even you know gave them the time of day in the first place. But yeah, that's just the way it goes. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it. You guys can go and read more about the whole uh, Goliath thing in Hollywood and how they're trying to take control of the web. There's a really a really nice, thorough, uh, well-researched uh, slew of articles here on The Verge. Some of the best stuff they've done in a while. And one thing that I think is interesting, if you guys look at the comments, there there are some issues in, in, apparently in some of the um, articles, but in the comments, the author of the articles has been t going back and forth with people and they've been correcting every once in a while. Like, oh, you missed the date. You put 1976 instead of 1967. And they, they, he's like, oh, okay, thanks, updated. So he is actively, you know, reading the comments and everything as well. So it's, it's an interesting thing to follow or disturbing thing to follow. Yeah. All right, what is, what is next we got to talk about? Oh, let's talk about Descent. Uh, from, this is a partnership uh, between Yale and uh, the University of Austin. And I'll go ahead and let you uh, jump in and talk about this, this new system. Descent is a project is a, that is a research collaboration between Yale University and UT Austin to create a powerful, practical, anonymous group communication system offering strong, provable security guarantees with reasonable efficiency. So that's pretty cool. See, that when we talk about Tor, you know, Tor tries to give everyone anonymity. And, you know, we've talked about how, you know, you can have malicious servers that are part of the Tor network that if you have enough of them, they can work together to sort of unmask your, your anonymity. And then we talk about VPNs and how it gives you a different kind of of security and a different kind of privacy than Tor and a lot of the other, you know, a lot of the other technologies like that that are out there. Descent is uh, really good for group communications. And so things think like Occupy Wall Street and citizen activist groups and things like that where everybody doesn't necessarily have to be anonymous from everybody else, but you want sort of group communication where you have anonymity within the group. But you can still work together as a group, and you've you've got some level of trust, so you don't necessarily have, you know, the the ability for a few bad actors to come in and poison the well. The biggest feature about Descent, the communications network that Descent builds, is if you've got some servers that are that are participating, 
and you've got, uh, say, some malicious servers that are also participating. As long as at least one server is not malicious, the anonymity is guaranteed across the entire network. That's the design of the future. This is a project to watch, and if anybody out there wants to contribute to something amazing, this would be the project for you. Indeed. All right, <clears throat> next up, we're talking a little bit about Comcast and Verizon. They've got these ridiculous um, astroturfing projects going on right now where they're smearing net neutrality. I don't really want to get into this too much because I think our audience is, is wise enough to know that a lot of the advertisements that are popping up and saying like, hey, if, if net neutrality happens, uh, your your mom is going to combust and your cat's going to fall out the window and a meteor's going to hit the earth and tidal waves are going to... It's basically going to be the apocalypse... So that's kind of what the ad, you know, the ad <laughs> campaign's going. Uh, Comcast has one's totally disingenuous. The, Tom, Com, Comcast one is is particularly um, evil because they keep going on and on about how they are totally cool about net neutrality. They're totally okay with the ideas of net neutrality. They're not going to do them, but they're they, that's, <laughs> that's the funny thing is they don't they're not making any promises to do anything. They're saying like, yeah, we we agree with net neutrality. They're not going to do anything. Well, the, the, it's, it's it's go ahead. Well, it, you know, uh, go back to the the open internet rules. The open internet rules is three rules. They won't do don't it. block, don't discriminate, and don't lie to your customer. Like, to, if you're going to do stuff, tell your customer what you're doing. Make sure they know what it is they're buying. That's rule one. Rule two is don't block anything that's lawful. And rule three is don't discriminate anything that's lawful. Three rules. Three rules for the open internet. Well, you you know rules. something funny? Comcast... That because of their hideously evil ways is is the only company that is legally bound to those three rules because they were <laughs> so insidious about breaking. They were, they were just crazy. That So the FCC had to actually create special provi- provisions just for Comcast to say, stop it. You stop it. But but in, but those <laughs> those expire in 2018. So right now, I mean, Comcast can actually come out and say like, yeah, yeah, we, we've Kind of, we kind of have to, you know, <laughs> but come 2018. Well, they're still, I mean, one of the reasons the FCC sued them was the uh, throttling torrent traffic, and they still mess with th- with torrent traffic. They, they will still send uh, reset packets in torrent data streams. And so it would be like as if, you know, Logan and I were writing letters to one another through the postal service, and the postal service intercepted some of the letters that we were writing each other and replaced the letters with, I hate you, go to hell and die, and then <laughs> sent it to both of us. And so Logan would get a letter from me that's like, I hate you, go to hell and die, and then I would get one you know, that, that was the same thing. That is exactly what they were doing with torrent traffic, and it, the FCC was like, you guys should probably stop that. And they were like, no, no, we're not going to stop. You, and, and you can't make us. And they won their court case because the whole Title One, Title Two thing. Even though the oh, I, God damn it, <laughs> I can't handle it. Let's just uh, okay. The next thing, okay, Verizon. Move got on. Their whole, you know what? I'm. I don't even want to get into these guys. They've got their whole uh, astroturfing campaign going on as well. You, you may, you may have seen it on the web. Yeah, it's basically, <laughs> and I like this quote here on the bottom. It's basically making everything foggy, especially for the people who are not in the know. Like we're talking like a lot of times your parents, people who do not work in the technology world, people who are not really up on things, people who use Apple products, people who um, are, are casuals as far as computer goes, people who are just going about their lives, doing their thing, and you know, not really deep into this stuff. They don't know. So they're going to fall for a lot of this stuff because they are swimming through a sea of fog. The information has <laughs> turned to fog. It's rough. You guys are the evangelists. You got to be out there, and and don't let anybody tell you that this is a tinfoil hat thing. It's not. It's happening. It's real. It's normal. It's not some like woo woo science out out there aliens type stuff. Ask it's not yourself that. why companies like these companies would pay people to post comments on YouTube and forums like ours about you know why this is good. Why would they pay a company? to pretend to be an individual with an individual opinion to post on these forums. Why would somebody do that? No one in their right mind would do that. There is no actual real people that want this. This is companies paying other companies to post things on forums and YouTube. And that, that, that is, that's, I just, I don't even, the mind reels, there's the mind reels. And if I think about it too long, I'm probably going to have an aneurysm. You know, let's not think about that. Let's think about something even worse. 
I'm just I, I just getting worse. Yep. <laughs> so let's talk about Jewel versus the NSA. That's kind of happening in in, in courts right now. So this is really fun. Funny. Uh, I guess Jewel and the EFF have been working together, and basically what they're saying is right right now uh, the NSA. They basically look at, I keep saying basically, but this is basically what's going to happen for the rest of the episode. So basically, the NSA basically looks at all of the data on the, on the web. It just pretty much between A and either they've got a thing. And then they, I think they we filter skip it this down. Because they never updated it. They never updated they it with what happened. We should probably well, talk about it next week. Yeah. I've got a new article right here on this that I just found. I was trying to look it up. But yeah, we probably should go over it in more detail next week. But. Apparently, the NSA, their the reply to all this was, hey, everything's cool, just trust us. So that's, that's the, the one phrase update is, you know, the NSA looking at all the data. Uh, they're going against um, the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution, which give you your right to security and privacy and all that, kind of, all that kind of stuff. But, yeah, we'll get into this next week. That's a good idea. We'll keep on moving. But, yeah, that's, that scares me. Just trust us. You guys have had such a great track record. I think we should just trust you. And Wired is all weird. <laughs> Let's reload wired and see what happens. All right, let's talk about some. I guess this is kind of hardware, but um, the Navy has these new robot sharks. Look and swim, just like real sharks. This might be the uh, the next step in either spy drones or I don't even know. A lot of different applications for this. They even could be we- you know could be weapons. One of these things swimming up to you know a group of whatever they wanted to take out, and then boom. <laughs> Maybe. I'm glad they're robots now and not dolphins because we had weaponized dolphins. Probably still do have weaponized dolphins. Nobody wants to hear <laughs> poor, about that. Poor no, dolphins. No, no, no one wants to hear about that. Everybody, everyone wants, <laughs> everyone, you're breaking people's bubbles. They don't want to know about these things. <laughs> you're making them consider things. Stop that. <laughs> uh, so that's pretty interesting. You know what else is interesting? Gigantic blimps, about three times the size of the Goodyear blimp. Floating. You know, just floating right off I-95. So they were making several of these. This is a $2.8 billion army project. It's taken 18 years. They were supposed to have, oh, lots of these, and they've only got like three or four of these. But here's the thing. They throw these things in the air, and they're able to kind of surveil an area around 340 miles in every direction. They've got one camera that sees in all directions, and they've got another camera that can kind of like go in and and look at like an individual truck or something and watch it go by. Now, they're saying that these things um, are not accurate enough to see like a license plate or they're not accurate enough to see who's driving a vehicle, but they can can track a vehicle. You know, they're like, hey, there's a vehicle going. So they're going to put one pretty close to Washington, D.C., and that one will be able to see. It's actually 45 miles north of Washington, D.C. That will be able to see everything from Baltimore to around North Carolina. And, uh, yeah. I, mean, I don't know. Should we be concerned about this? It is kind of creepy having these things floating up there in the right <laughs> off the interstate because they're only going to be 10,000 feet up, and they're huge. And uh, you'll, you'll be able to just, I, hey, there's one of those things. Spy I, Look I, at just, that. I don't know. See, the article is kind of confusing because they talk about how they're not going to do anything other than radar. So no super high resolution optical, no super high resolution thermal. But the radar is apparently, yeah, well, they have them, but it's not going to be on this particular blimp. But uh, apparently the radar is such high resolution that they can tell the difference between, you know, a truck and a sedan and a, you know, a compact car on the highway in an area that spans, you know, we're talking all of West Virginia and all of Virginia, uh, you know, up up the east coast, almost to Maine, or uh, whatever you said for as far north as it goes. I that's think it's a crazy a, all, all, big only area. Mar- only Maryland, only Baltimore, or Maryland. Only that's a crazy big area that this thing can surveil, and so it's only a matter of time before that's augmented with other sensors. But I thought the article, the the military people bent over backwards to say, well, this is really just for radar and tracking missiles and incoming things and things like that. And for air defense, this kind of technology probably is going to be necessary for uh, tracking incoming trajectories. Because at some point in the not-too-distant future, a a country's air force is going to be completely irrelevant. And the reason for that is because of this type of tracking technology and lasers. It's like, oh, we got an ICBM coming in from China. Oh, what are we going to do? Oh, laser and this kind of tracking and problem handled. Yeah. So I think Russia is going to be the big thing to worry about pretty soon, the way we're going. Just keep on bothering those Russians. But oh. that's, why, that, that's what these are for. They're not, they're not to watch you guys, right? All right, let's go ahead and talk about Cyanogen Mod. Um, their OnePlus One has been banned in India. Um, now, Cyanogen, the, the, the team Cyanogen, they have, uh, or I guess the OnePlus One is supposed to have, I don't know how it works, a, a relationship with, with Cyanogen. However, uh, Micromax has an exclusive deal in India. So 
they've blocked the one plus one from from selling. That sounds kind of ridiculous. I mean, it's an Android mod. Can a can a company have an exclusive deal with with a you know ROM? Uh, it just seems weird. I don't know. It does seem very weird. We just want to call attention to it because why? Why would you do yeah, this? It's, it's really weird. I mean, that that phone, the Micro Max, look, they've got a new one coming out. Um, it looks really nice. It's like 150 bucks. It's a, a quad core, an octa core. It's only two gigabytes of RAM, 2500 milliamp hour battery, and 5.5 uh, inch screen, not 1080p. It's like a, it's it looks like a uh, a one plus one light. It, I mean, it could be all right, but. I don't know, it's just yeah, very weird. Anyway, moving right along here. Um, should we talk about HR 4681? This crazy <laughs> law. We could probably mention it's an it American, and then move on. We could, we could summarize it in 30 seconds. So right, let's do it. there is an intelligence authorization bill for 2014, 2015. We snuck in funding and approval and like legal stuff to allow NSA bulk collection of surveillance. And it was added at the last minute. Nobody read the thing. And basically everybody in our government said, oh, yeah, this is totally fine. So, I mean, it's basically what they've been doing already in the first place. It just now it will be completely legal without question. They're like, oh, yeah, you guys can just take stuff without asking anybody. Yeah, just... Just hoover it up, man. Just we saw fine. this play out a few years ago when it was like, wait a minute. You remember? You guys remember? Uh, it was like AT and T's collecting all this stuff, and then it was like, wait a minute. This is a corporation. They're not allowed to do that. And it's like, oh, let's give them retroactive immunity. This is the same deal. Same, same people. Different, you know, different day. Yeah. All right, let's talk about some cool hardware. Um, this is a dock, and I've been predicting this for a long time. I think the future uh, game consoles are going to be something similar to this. Possibly. Uh, this is a <clears throat> pardon me, dock called uh, Andromium. And what it allows you to do is take your Android device and you plug it into a, a dock. It charges the device. And then uh, with an HDMI cord, it hooks up to a TV. And then you have a desktop environment. So they've basically created some sort of an app that allows you to have a desktop environment. There are controllers if you wanted to play games on it, like you can see them doing right now, just like I said was going to happen. Of course, this is not going to rival uh, the power and speed of most game consoles, but in about a year, it probably is going to be faster than the game consoles. Actually, I don't know. I bet the NVIDIA thing is already faster than and looks better than some of the game consoles. So, yeah. I don't know. It's pretty cool. It's kind of what I've been saying is going to happen. I think we'll see more of these. This is going to be version one. This guy is annoying as hell. <laughs> uh, the, the, the guy on the screen there that's selling the stuff. So, this is version one. I think... I think this is where things are going because, uh, you know, I got the Surface 3 and I've been really impressed with the Surface 3. Basically, all the problems with the Surface 3 were entirely software. The hardware engineering team should get an A+, plus, uh, maybe an A-. minus. They went with the Avastar wireless controller and that thing has been a turd. But uh, the Surface 3 is insanely thin. It's a tablet, but it is incredibly powerful for what it is. And so if you imagine a phone as something, you know, half to a third as big as the Surface, uh, this is really exciting. In three to five years, if I had Surface-level horsepower in something the size of a phone for basic things like corporate email and, and corporate work and remoting into a corporate environment, you know, a terminal server or something, uh, that could be a viable computation device for a significant pr portion of the American workforce. And that is really exciting to think about. Yep. All right, let's talk about, uh, well, I guess this is still kind of hardware science. I don't know. So, um, you know, renewable energy is becoming a pretty big thing right now. Um, it's doing well in a lot of different countries, especially the developing world. It's now becoming less expensive than fossil fuels, which is really cool. And in a time like this, uh, you know what I think we should do, Wendell? I think we should build the biggest vessel in history, and we should make it a vessel for harvesting oil and refining oil. And that's what they've done. <laughs> you guys catch the sarcasm by chance? Oh, Lord. It's, it's super impressive. They're building this. This is uh, South Korea. It is huge. The, the actual length of this is like 488 meters long. Way bigger than anything that's ever been produced before. And as you can see here, they are putting uh, the refinery so they can actually break down the crude oil right there on the vessel. Normally, they have to bring the vessel back to a location and then break it down. They are putting these 500 and uh, I mean 5,500 uh, ton things, pipe unit mes meshes of things, right on there. There's a whole bunch of them. So yeah, they've got. It's basically a gigantic uh, refinery and factory. That's going to float down to Australia and uh, 
oh, it's probably going to create a nice leak for you guys. You know, if you, uh, you, I figured you guys didn't need any more barrier reefs and stuff. They're, you guys have had them for too long. It's time for someone else to get some. So they're going to come down there and destroy those and get rid of all that. And, <laughs> you know, mess with the this sea is, life a little bit. It'd, it'd be cool. This, it'd be fine. This is so reminiscent. This technology is so reminiscent of like the technology that you read about in certain kinds of science fiction that are like, you know, roving the planet side, consuming all the resources. And then once all the resources have been consumed, it just sort of moves on. It's like that for the ocean with oil. This is the spice <laughs> harvester right here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's, that's, that's the thing compared to the Sydney opera house. That is crazy. That is freaking ridiculous. So yeah. Yeah. But it doesn't hit an iceberg. All right, next up on the list. Uh, you know what? I don't want to talk about the Rolls-Royce thing. We're probably running long right now. They did find some water and some organic matter on Mars. That is really interesting. Uh, no proof of life just yet. But, you know, um, science fiction writers go crazy. Go freaking crazy Organic right molecules. Now. Organic yeah. molecules. So that's the thing. I'll let you in on a secret. There is, uh, well, There was at one time microbial life on Mars. And how do I know that? Uh, the Viking lander. And it was in the 70s, and NASA had a criteria. We're going to do, we're going to put this lander on Mars. It's got three tests for life. And two of the tests were like, yeah, there's life. And one of the tests was inconclusive. And they're like, oh, we don't know if there's life on Mars. We don't know. It's fine. So they, so and, they just uh, left it at that. Yeah, they just left it at that. The thing that blew my mind was they did this test in the 70s, and one of the tests was, uh, uh, is there something in the soil that would metabolize radioactive sugar into radioactive carbon dioxide? And the answer was yes, there was. And they collected the data on that. And then later in the 80s, some clever graduate student was like, hey, wait a minute. If that was Earth bacteria that contaminated the test, it would probably still be following an Earth day's circadian rhythms. Because circadian rhythms hadn't been discovered in the 70s when the experiment was originally performed. But <gasps> we had the data! And so we did the data, and it turns out that it was... Uh, a Martian day circadian rhythm and not an Earth day circadian rhythm. And it was like, holy crap, microbial life on Mars. And so organic molecules in the hull, woot. Let's talk about a place where life really doesn't do so hot. Well, maybe it is too hot. I don't even know. Venus. <laughs> <laughs> what a terrible pun. <laughs> I couldn't even, I, I, I had to stop myself. I was, gonna, I was actually going to go into a bad, dark area of punnery. And uh, yeah. It was going to be punishment for the audience. Anyway, uh, so NASA is, is thinking about a manned solar-powered airship hovering above Venus. Because the thing about Venus is if you go down to the surface, I mean, it's like it, you could melt lead on the surface of Venus. Anyway, if you um, float, oh, 50 kilometers up, it's not too bad. I mean, it gets up to 175 degrees Fahrenheit, which is, I think, around uh, no, 175 degrees, which is 75 degrees Celsius, which is I don't even know what. Yeah. I have no idea what, what numbers. It gets to some crazy numbers at, at daytime, and then at nighttime it gets to some other crazy numbers. But the bottom line is is um, once you get up there, it's about one atmosphere of pressure. It's normal. It's cool. You, you, can, you can do just fine. You, uh, so, yeah, there would be no problem to float a solar-powered blimp. Uh, and Venus also gets a lot more sun than us, so solar power would be just fine. They could collect a bunch of it and uh, study Venus, our little... Hot-headed friend. All right, next up on the list. Oh, this is kind of cool. Every day, we're getting closer to Deus Ex. This double amputee here, 40 years ago. A uh, freak electrical accident. Both of his arms were lost. And they've uh, fitted him with these two robotic arms that have all the degrees of motion of uh, regular you know, human arms. And he's able to control these with his mind. And it works. And this is the first. The first is always crude. But they, and they actually had to, the thing that's interesting, they actually had to move some nerves uh, from one part of his body and put them over here because the nerves were damaged. So they were able to do that. The next step is going to be fusing those nerves to bionic arms. But right now we just have, you know, th these are not actually fused. You know, he's wearing a suit and they're attached to the suit and his brain controls them. But hey, it's pretty cool. I don't know. B -b 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 bionic... I want a bionic uh, a mustache. I don't have a mustache, but Deus I would do X. a bi I would I would definitely do a bionic mustache. You know, one a mustache that like Wolverine style mustache with blades. So if someone bothers me and they're giving me a hug, I'd be like. <laughs> I don't know so what I'm you're saying at. is you want to become the face hugger from Alien. 
<laughs> yeah, I've been wanting to do that ever since I was a wee lad. And I grew up, I was like, God, what do you want to be when you grow up? A face hugger. Well, that's uh, interesting. <laughs> Speaking of Deus Ex, <laughs> let's talk about video games, shall we? Oh my God, Steam, Steam sale. Steam, Steam holiday sale. Go crazy. Go load up on hot DRM right now. Guys, DRM <laughs> right here. Get your fresh Go. steaming hot DRM right here. It's you know, extra said, extra DRM if you get you're getting something from Ubisoft or EA because you get the yeah. Steam DRM and you get whatever crap those people have put on it. Double DRM. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm all, every time we talk about Steam, I'm going to make fun of their freaking DRM. They they are the coolest thing ever, and Gabe Newell is the coolest thing ever. Even though everyone on freaking Master Race deifies him way too much, it's unhealthy, guys. Stop it. Go have a bowl <laughs> of cereal and a coffee, and come back later and see how you feel. I don't know what that means. Um, I get a. I get a free yeah. Far, Cry, Far Cry 4 key, and it was like, oh, it's not it's not the Steam DRM. I have to have that and something else. And it was like, yeah. ah, I'll just give it away on Twitter, and I gave it to somebody on Twitter. And they were like, oh, my God, thank you. And it's like, I'm not going to just, no. Yeah, Pistol really wanted to play Far Cry 4 as well, but then double the DRM, she was like, I, no. No, it's not happening. <laughs> so... <laughs> DRM man. Anyway, maybe the yeah, pirates really, out there will be like, "Look, we've repackaged it to be like the pirates of yesteryear would." I don't know how this is dealt with now, but the pirates of yesteryear would repackage the game and would have this amazing installer, and the game would totally clean up after itself after it's uninstalled, and it would be something that the company should have done. But now I think everything is just has like Bitcoin miners and malware. It's just a, <laughs> it's really it's really bad. So yeah, I, I I do use Steam, guys. I prefer good old games, but there's a lot of things you can't get on there. So yeah, I have to use Steam for some games. I wish I didn't have to because I don't like DRM, but that's enough. I, I'm going to leave it alone. I know you guys love Steam, so yeah, go ahead. I'm kind of pragmatic uh, about Steam. It's not. It's, it's the best. It's it's pirates are going to pirate it regardless of what you do, and you know Steam has not been particularly onerous in my case. Although there are examples. Where Steam has been onerous, but I mean, I'm not sure if this is an example or not. But Steam is region locking Russian games right now because you know the the, the ruble has crashed, um, and it's at a point right now where the games over there are cheaper, and they don't want people you know using Russian games elsewhere in the world because they're getting cheaper games. It's not fair. No, so they're region locking the games. That is a bit. Eh, I don't know. That's a bit off putting. Yeah. That's a bit weird. Anyone else is off-putting? <laughs> I'm going to make fun of his mansion. Notch bought a $70 million mansion. He outbid Jay-Z and Beyonce with a <laughs> hyphen on it. She, I didn't know she had a hyphen on the end of her name. You can't do that. Can, can you do that? Can you just do that? I don't, I don't think she's that's an allowed. Artiste. She's, an, she's an artiste. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm uh, Logan with a hyphen over the G. That's so, that's so wrong, but I'm going to do it. Hyphen over the G and... Umlaut over the L. What would that even <laughs> there sound are, like? Lugan. There are there, will, there are pictures <laughs> of this house online, and it's oh, completely I've got right insane. I He's think got a that, candy room. I don't think Notch <laughs> needs a candy room. <laughs> the <laughs> only way that I would make think this is maybe okay is if now Notch posts something to the internet, and he's like calling all like super nerd programmers, come and live at my house with me, and let's work on something amazing. And then it's like, okay, Notch, this seventy million dollar purchase is completely okay. It, Otherwise, you know oh my like? god, it's just so decadent. It's crazy. It's not even. It looks decadent, but to me, this looks like. The, the coach store at like a faux upscale mall. One of those malls in a middle class area where people think they're rich, but they're not really rich. So they shop at like BCBG and whatever the fuck else they have in those like fake malls with the everything that looks like marble, but it's actually plastic. I'm sure this is real marble, but it looks like that. Or it looks like something you'd see in Vegas. I'm, I'm making fun of <laughs> Notch's mansion right now. I'm not even jealous <laughs> of his $70 million mansion. I'm jealous of his wine cellar. But I don't know. This is... It's not my. It's not my style. Some of you guys out there are gonna be like, "Dude, you're a freaking idiot." He's got like cars. He's got like indoor cars. He's got a motorcycle. He's got like a white stuff and some more white stuff. I don't know. I think it's kind of ugly, but got a the only thing bar. that's on my shopping list for the insanely rich is uh, Tony Stark's uh, uh, machine room uh, with the 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 Fainuck robotics and the uh, mills and and lathes and people to run them. And uh, I think we've talked about that before. It's like, if you get fabulously wealthy, I would be just hiring people to work on my side projects that I have ideas for. 
you know what, Notch, can, he deserves to retire. If he wants to retire, goof off or whatever, he can have this junk. It just it seems a little out of character for him to be in, in uh, Los Angeles after him always talking about how he's sort of an introvert and doesn't really like the fame and didn't really anticipate his Minecraft to blow up this way. So that always it seems out of character for him to do this, but he can do whatever he wants, so I don't care. I don't have to like it. And if he doesn't, if he wants to have developers come there and live in the basement and make things, he can do that. But if not, I think we might need to do that. <laughs> Plot twist. He bought the rights to Goat Simulator and is working on Goat Simulator 2. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Yep. I, I, yeah. What's this? Oh, yeah. I forgot to put this in there. Empire Threatens Alderaan like Massacre of Star Wars released. I was going to put that in there earlier. It would have been funny. That picture is oh, well. funny. <laughs> well, I have decided that it is funny. So everyone else on the internet, let it be let it be known that it is funny. <laughs> well, I wonder if I wonder if uh, PC Master Race is going to call us blasphemers for making fun of Steam. I think they might. Guys, don't do that. They might. You guys really need to give good old games some love for the love of God. I know a lot of you guys are a bit younger and don't know about a lot of the games on Good Old Games, but I'm talking straight to the guys on our PC Master Race right now. Check out Good Old Games. Give them some love. DRM free and older games. I got newer games too, but you know, that's that's my platform of choice. Anyway, good old games is nice. It is. We sound like NPR right now. It's very nice. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Yes. Uh, I've gone to good old games, and I'm now distracted by how many things are on sale and how much I'm going to have to spend later. <laughs> All right. That's, that's. I believe that's what I'm going to do as well. All right, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. That's going to be on late because it's late right now. And I better go edit this thing. I need to. This is the ending. Oh, thanks for all the tech support people. We've got new stuff in the store. You guys are going to have to see this. The 30 people that are left watching this crap are going to be forced to look at the store right now because we have new things that are really fun. And uh, we've got these new coasters in that are really. This is um, basic 101 wood shop stuff right here. We took things that fell from trees like branches, cut them into coasters, and branded them with our logo. Did you see these yet, Wendell? The, the logo branding on Epic Pants that we did? It's um, silly. These are supposed to look rough. These are rough. The beer openers are rough. Everything that we have on there is rough. It's unrefined. It's not sanded. It's not stained. These are ugly. They're, the bark is going to chip. It's going to be... Uh, they're they're, they're going to look weathered and tough. So you get them and expect them to be like perfect things? No. These are handmade and I told the guys that, that chopped these things up to make them rough and ugly. Just like me. Oh. Alright, so that's the end of the episode. <laughs>